Hello my Asoka Universe and welcome to the first review of the new year 23 and yes it is still my Asoka Universe it's just a whole lot brighter there in the background um, so before we get to the Premier League I have just decided to wash the scarves and maybe rearrange a little bit up there I'm honestly thinking it might not be the worst thing to keep it that bright on the other side still have to think about it. I'm really bugged by this white hole right here so Gotta see how it will develop. Um, my family was a little bit shocked to see the room so bright at the moment. <laughs> so we have to see uh, where this will go. I may actually ask you guys in a separate post. But Premier League. Premier League is back. Um, I have not done any short videos or any of the like for the very simple reason. I really wanted to take time off of that uh, job. I had a vacation. I was very busy with my year end videos. But I didn't want to do really much more, but just enjoy without having to think all the time uh, about making videos, which is also for a change. And after this World Cup, I was a little bit done with uh, review videos. However, the first thing I even thought, shall, shall I take a break? And then there was in the Carabao Cup, City against Liverpool. Uh, and yes, I pulled it on. And yes, it was pretty clear from the beginning. It was a whole different level of football. As much as I love the World Cup, if you want to see good football slash soccer, however uh, one is to call it, club football is very sad. It really is. It was just... Yeah, there were five goals scored. And it continued all this way. Uh, even uh, on Boxing Day, the fixtures, I really thought overall... This was a, a whole different level of entertaining. And that is actually, in a way, a good thing. I am a little bit bugged that we already, you know, we barely had a week. We actually started right after the World Cup back with action, uh, which didn't let us really digest the World Cup. But it was so obvious because the change around was so quick. It was so obvious that international soccer cannot compete on the same level as the club game can and it's in large part due that there was and i've said it during my world cup it was due that there was no preparation time for these teams and it developed throughout the tournament and yes in the end we got some great games but overall the quality at least of the premier league but i also saw it in la liga and in league are overall was better that's the first conclusion I want to make. The second one, and that's probably the big, uh, uh, the uh, bigger storyline is, despite having a seven-week, more or less break, let's say six-week break, um, not much has really changed except maybe where there were new appointments made. I'm looking, for instance, at Wolves or Villa, where those teams suddenly seem a little bit more together because they got new Sp fancy Spanish coaches. And maybe there's something that could help them uh, develop a little bit further. But uh, the old trends, we still think that Newcastle is really, really good. We really see that Spurs are still very, very fragile. Uh, Chelsea is still a mess. Liverpool, a work in progress. Uh, City can be really, really impressive if they want to, but they can be gotten it. And Arsenal just continue where they start, where they left off. Hence, I'm wearing Arsenal, my, this wonderful jersey that I got last year. Still, Arsenal are the class of the league at this very moment. And what makes it even sweeter, and this is also the reason why I decided to do this video, video now and not wait. Part of it is also to kind of allow me to not have bang, bang, bang videos on the weekend. But um, Arsenal have extended their lead. It's now seven points and never has a team that led by seven points around this time of the year. Uh, not won the title. However, usually we were already past the halfway mark of the seasons, which we are not yet. So this is my big, big caveat. Uh, I'm just saying many say it's now 50-50 towards Arsenal. You can still see City making a huge run and maybe this Arsenal team falling a little bit away. They are two head-to-heads. But now Arsenal could lose both head-to-heads and still be in the lead if they win out for the rest. So hold your horses. Arsenal fans uh, still yet, but it looks actually overall quite good. You're at least a co-favorite and a return to the Champions League is very, very likely. 
Let's run through some of the games. As I said, I watched a little bit more than I did actually expect it. I actually found the Brentford Spurs game uh, really entertaining. Uh, of course, Brentford ran out to a 2 0 lead. Ivan Tony can play uh, despite the um, proposed betting ban. I have my thoughts on it, but it's not for for this game. So they're a 2 0 lead, and you think everything is going fine, and then uh, Kane pulls one back, Hoiberg short shot after, and then you really think that Spurs should not kick on and win it. They didn't, and uh, Spurs really are in a very much a finding phase. Maybe it's good to have the finding phase now and then kick on later. I, I'm not writing off Spurs by any uh, degree. Fulham with a relatively easy win at Crystal Palace, but two red cards were of a big help there. Everton Wolves, this was a big game in the relegation battle, and although Everton fans all said we need this win and they got the dual, dual delete, I think this was really, really important for Wolves to get that win, to stay in contention uh, there. Podens with the equalizer, and very late on as the game kind of fizzled out to a draw, uh, Nuri gets a late winner for Wolves and putting Everton fans again on high alert. Everton don't quite look right as well, which is a shame to say because the big club that they are, they should go in there. Uh, for me, on Boxing Day, probably the most impressive performance was what uh, Newcastle did to Leicester. I still don't know what to make of this Leicester team, to be honest. Uh, but the way Newcastle took took their part within the first 10 minutes through Chris Wood and Almiron, and Joel Linton then scoring another one, and those are all players that you would not say are great players. Uh, really, really amazing stuff there. And I think Newcastle is definitely in for a Champions League uh, spot. Not sure if they will make it, but I think it is very much a possibility. And given their new financial might behind them, you could easily see them probably in the next two seasons to be a regular up there in the Champions League final. And Eddie, Eddie Howe is doing a really good uh, job. Uh, things are getting very dark for Southampton. Uh, in a way... I actually hope that they finally appreciate what they had in Ralf Hasenhüttl, uh, as maligned as he was, but let's see how it will go forward. Uh, Brighton having no trouble, horrible jersey matchup though, I gotta say. Villa against Liverpool, I think first half was all Liverpool with Salah scoring early on, Van Dijk getting ahead, there was even a disallowed goal by Joel Matip in there. However, then 15 minutes after, after the restart, uh, it was really Villa, Villa, Villa pressing, pushing and uh, Kind of showing all of Liverpool's frailties. Uh, they had an early goal by Watkins. Uh, they did this allowed, but he gets them uh, the one two. And at this moment, you really had to f uh, fear for Liverpool that they actually might get an equalizer, if not even a bit more. However, Klopp made some changes. He brought on Keita, he brought on uh, Elliot, and then a little bit later, even Bajetic for Henderson and Joe Gomez for Alexander Arnold. It was then Bajetic uh, after a run by uh, Darwin Nunez who still cannot score, but causing all kinds of trouble up front, which might actually alleviate his uh, lack of scoring. And then the ball comes to Bajcetic, who for a young teenager with a very, very cool and collected finish. I also have to say, uh, this greenish Liverpool jersey doesn't look all that bad. Uh, I'm actually wondering, I, I, I would like to have a third color on the Liverpool jersey. I have a white one, of course, I have three, uh, I think I have three red ones. Yeah, three red, red ones and a white one. I would like to get another color. I always thought it's yellow, but green looks also quite good for Liverpool. Let, let me know what you think about that. And then Arsenal, I, that's a game that I really paid attention because I really want to see whether Arsenal can do anything. Um, they were pressuring uh, a lot and they looked kind of all right. Yes, there was no uh, Gabriel Jesus, but Nketiah kind of stepped in. It's not the same role. We all know all that. But Gab Gabriel Jesus was definitely... But I, I didn't feel that Arsenal really looked all that bothered by that. I uh, had an early soccer goal. This, 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 this allowed. But, you know, maybe a little bit finding. And then you can see the penalty, um, which was a clear penalty. It has, as we say... Ben Rama um, scoring that one in 27th, and you really thought maybe West Ham, who have been also looking quite in trouble overall. Um, maybe, maybe this is the kickstart to their season. They almost conceded a penalty, uh, which was then wiped, wiped off, but after they have Oedegaard, who now is also take, taking shots, Shushu uh, Sasa, such a false direct to Saka, who makes it 1 1, and then Martinelli shortly after 2 1. Really nice goal. And then Nketiah gets also won, and Arsenal looked on the way. I think 
they needed to turn this game around and now everything is back to normal again. That was Boxing Day. Uh, the other three games that were left over, yes, there were all the big teams in there, but it was not that, that, that these were really a uh, competitive fixture. I mean, United uh, toyed with uh, Forest, with uh, especially Rashford and Martial getting also on the scoring sheet. Um, but Rashford is really uh, finding uh, his old self again, which is actually quite good, good to see. And of course, Casemiro is a huge improvement on that squad and also maybe not having the dark cloud of Cristiano now in Saudi Arabia around probably also does help quite, quite a bit. Chelsea had a uh, rather non-spectacular win over Bournemouth. Um, Leeds against City. I joined around the 30th minute because it was still nil nil. I actually said uh, he expected a city to um, be up by two or three at that point already. No, it was not to be, but it was exactly that at the, the, the game where they just dominate everything, uh, but they couldn't score. And especially Grealish had a really big miss there in the first half, but Rodri then gets the go ahead goal just before the half. In that moment, it was clear there's only one winner. And then Erling Haaland, a self professed Leeds fan, scores too, of course, not celebrating uh, against the team where of, of the city where he grew, uh, grew up, both assisted by Grealish. Um, it looked rather straightforward. Strike pulls one back to give some hope to Leeds fans, but it was never really there. It was a very complete performance by Manchester City. And this young Erling Haaland, he was not at the World Cup. He made sure that he continues his scoring. I think he's now at 20 before the new year. This is just an incredible return. Yes, he's outperforming expected goals uh, vastly, but still really, really, really impressive stuff from him. So in that sense, the first set of fixtures didn't bring us anything that surprising with the maybe the exception that Spurs did not get a, a win at Brentford, but then Spurs don't get wins at Brentford. So in that sense, overall, nothing really changed, but that was about to change now over the New Year's round. Um, we started out with Brentford beating West Ham, a West Ham team that actually had control of the game. But then Ivan Tony and Da Silva in the first half scored two, two goals and there was no way back for West Ham. West Ham at this moment are really, really, really need to be careful to see where they are, they are going. Um, and it's not gonna get go towards Europe. And I'm afraid there might be a managing change coming around, although it probably would not be very warranted either. Liverpool still looking not right. Uh, Leicester actually being much the better team in the first half with a uh, brilliant counter attacking goal by Dewsbury Hall, assisted by Patson Daka. But then Fez, but they are Belgian a substitute defender completely implodes with two on goals. Against the run of play, uh, Liverpool get two on goals within uh, seven minutes of each other. Completely imploding there. I mean, the first one is unlucky, but uh, you know, uh, you can hit the ball a little bit clean. The second one is just, <laughs> yeah, where shall I put the ball? Yeah, let's put it in, 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 into the net. It was not a convincing performance by Liverpool at all, but they get the win and that's the most important thing because they, of course, want to get back to the Champions League, uh, which United also uh, would like to. And actually, Rashford did not start this time around because he was late uh, to a meeting. And coach Ten Hag really laying down the law. But as soon as he came on, United looked a whole lot, lot better. He scores one, could have scored the second one. That was um, disallowed for a handball. Uh, but overall, United then looked, you know, Wolves and United is there are not many goals being scored, so it was a rather rather tight game. Rashford making the deep difference, but Wolves also looking very much an improved squad in there. Uh, didn't see much of the wins, but Crystal Palace at Bournemouth and Fulham over Southampton, just that the London teams beat the South Coast teams. Then the big shocker, and in a way, I I did not see that on the 31st. I was very much. Um, working on my review videos and you know also then uh, already getting very much uh, into being with family and i had to watch the highlights of uh, city against everton uh everton defended with five at the back there were it was just a flat five back um Holland again getting the goal this guy cannot stop scoring uh but overall it seemed a little bit flat by united who had really uh united city uh, having a really hard time breaking down Everton and they only managed once and then they couldn't make it a second one 
And then Idris, Idris Gay assists uh, Gray. And a brilliant goal in the 60th minute, 64th minute gives them an equalizer. By the way, those pink shirts by Everton, I think they provide a good contrast at City, but it just doesn't look right. My personal all, all, all opinion. And then City, uh, again, need to find the next gear, but cannot find the goal and points dropped. And what makes it even sweeter is that Arsenal then could capitalize on that. Uh, on the other side, Newcastle and Leeds only play out a nil-nil draw, so I'm not sure what to really think about uh, either of these teams, uh, but okay. But then Arsenal, and I saw a little bit of the first half uh, and, and the beginning of the second half, uh, had actually no trouble in scoring goals through Saka, Odegaard and Nketiah. Once it's 3-0, you really thought the game, the game is done, but then a little bit later, Mitoma pulls one back, Martinelli makes it again 4-1. Ah, uh, but then there's another one scored for Brighton. And then, late on, a Mitoma goal is even disallowed. It would have made it 3-4. A little bit shaky, but in the end, Arsenal get the three points. Extend the lead to seven points. That was big. And then, on New Year's Day, Spurs looking abject against an Aston Villa team. Uh, who just take the chance, chances of Buendia and Douglas Lewis. And you really got a, a worry for Spurs. Um, and then even when you see the changes later on, Conte basically throw in the towel right there and then. Um, it's weird. And of course, Conte, as he always does, moaning for more money for more players. And the other London team, Chelsea, also not looking quite, quite right. Yes, they took the lead, but uh, it was more lucky. Uh, they came off the crossbar of Sterling, who pulled pull, pull it in. Forest at home are fighting and are fighting hard. Get the equalizer through Serge Aurier, had a good chance hitting the crossbar before. Uh, could probably have done more. And Chelsea is also a team very, very much where you don't know where is this going. Does, is there any plan? Um, I think this season should already be considered a ride off. Uh, but Graham Potter and the Premier League not looking good at all. Um, Current standings, as I said, it's seven points. It's still City more than 50% for the title because they're so much higher rated than Arsenal. But Arsenal now at 38%. It is a really, really close. There's a Liverpool with 8% in there because they also have a pretty high rating, although they're quite far off the mark. But again, look up there. It is a bit over 40% uh, of the season play. There's a lot of uh, soccer still to be played. Uh, we also got to look on the bottom where, you know, Everton first was down, now the up again. Wolves, it is getting tight there. I think there are quite a few teams implicated. I think starting at Leicester and most damningly West Ham looking really much in danger. I think Southampton are a team that seems at this moment almost a foregone conclusion of going going down. I think uh, while Nottingham get the big uh, 80% here, I actually have a little bit, I feel I have a little bit more hope because that's all down to, uh, to Forest not having a really good uh, rating. Uh, in the expected setting, it is Southampton, Bournemouth, not, uh, and Forest going down. Uh, on the top, we have actually a new top four. We, I had Newcastle after the previous round in there, but now it's United. Level with Newcastle, uh, but City, Arsenal, still Liverpool, United, and New Newcastle Spurs, who have been ahead of the break in the top four, are not breaking off, and Chelsea makes it to the Conference League. That will be an interesting entry to the Conference League. We have football today already. Brentford, Liverpool. Uh, that will, I think, this will be an interesting one. I'm really look, looking forward to that one. Uh, same goes for Arsenal against Newcastle. These are really tasty ties. And then we have a big one on Thursday between Chelsea and Man City. Although I can only see this going one way, to be honest. But those are for me the three standout fixtures for uh, this upcoming uh, round. Maybe Will, Will against Wolves could be an interesting one. The new uh, <laughs> Low Petegi against um now well, the name that doesn't come we are out from arsenal we are our manager uh that would be that's definitely gonna be a fun one as well and we also have chelsea manchester city but in the reverse fixture uh reverse fixture in the fa cup which comes on the weekend so we'll talk a little bit fa cup then as well here's a selection of there's quite actually quite some uh premier league duels united against everton is of course the big name one but we also have a Brentford against West Ham, Palace against Southampton, Liverpool against Wolves, and City against Chelsea. Arsenal league leaders have a duel at Oxford United, and a quick mention for Mets team 
Gillingham who play against Leicester. So yeah, those are the upcoming games. Loads happening already and you know, we're getting started with, with the new year. What did you think about the fixtures or that happened over this period? Now, uh, let me know in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel for see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.